Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video we're going to be advancing upon my respawn system and adding a death counter in this as well. So I say advancing on my respawn system, you don't necessarily need that, however it does make it a lot easier and obviously it allows us to respawn after we've died. So I imagine you probably already have a respawn system in here if you are now looking for a death counter. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and obviously leave a link in the description down below to the respawn tutorial. So I'm going to hit play and show you what this looks like. So what I'm going to do is get in, go into my respawn here, so this is where I respawn, this is my checkpoint, and then I'm going to die, and you can see in the top left, death has gone up to 1, if I do it again, it's going to go up to 2, and then 3, and so on and so forth, for as many times as we die, the death counter is going to increase, and I do have different videos on a save and load system, which will work perfectly for this as well, I shouldn't need to have to go into a specific video for this, because it's the same thing of in that video, I just saved and loaded an integer, and that is what this is as well. So that should work perfectly. Again, link to that in the description down below. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to open up our game mode blueprint or wherever you have the respawn code. So again, for me, this is the game mode blueprint. So that's content, third person VP, blueprints, third person game mode. Again, as you can see here, this is how I am respawning my character, which again, I have different videos on, but I also imagine you have this done already. So if you're using this system, what I'm going to do is move out the undestroyed custom event here because this is where we want to add it up. So I want to add up the integer before we respawn because that's going to be after a delay, but I wanted to do it straight away so the player instantly sees it. So I'm going to hit the plus variable here, naming this one deaths, and I'm going to change it from a boolean to be an integer so it's a numerical value. Compile, and I'm going to drag that in there, get deaths, and out of this I'm going to get an increment int. And what this does is it simply just adds one to the value which we want. So as you see there, add one to the specified value, then set it. So it will add one to the amount of deaths we have now. So it's the exact same as integer plus integer. It's just obviously always going to be one. And so then we want to set deaths off of that as well. So it's going to get deaths, add one to it, and then set it like so. And so now that is how we're going to keep track of how many times the player has died. Very, very simple. All we're doing is when the character gets destroyed, i.e. when the character dies, we're going to then just add one to the amount of deaths and then respawn them. Now, if you've got it set up differently and you don't actually have it so the character has been destroyed and it's not respawning this way, I'll show you another way of doing this. So I'm going to compile and save and then I'm going to open up my character blueprint or wherever you have the code for killing the player. So I'm going to go into the third person character here and as you can see, all I have is K is destroy actor. Again, for you, this might be something like set actor hidden in game, and then after a delay, set them not hidden or anything along those lines. But essentially, go to the code where you have for killing your character in any way you want. And out of press, what I'm going to do is cast to my game mode, which for me is the third person game mode, like so. Object being get game mode, like so. And what I'm going to do is simply just increase that death integer again. So make sure you do have the integer in the game mode. And as third person game mode, I'm going to get deaths, like so. Once again, getting an increment int like that. And then as third person game mode, once again, we're going to then set deaths, connecting that into the increment there, like so. So it's the exact same way we did it in the game mode, but it's just slightly differently if you don't have this code set up and you don't want it. It's just whenever we kill the player, we're then going to just add onto the deaths, like so. I'm going to get rid of that as that will mess up with my other code because I have them both. So you want one or the other, not both of them. So I'm gonna compile, save, and let's see what that error is. Oh, create widget, I forgot to delete that earlier. So that's my bad, that's because we're about to set that up now, I just forgot to delete it. So as you saw there, what we want to do next is I want to make it so the player can see this on the screen so they actually know how many times they've died. Uh, so to do that, what I'm gonna do is minimize this, go to the folder I want to create it, so for me that's just in deaths, and then I want to right click go to user interface and get a widget blueprint and I'm just going to simply name this deaths widget like so and open it up straight away going straight over to the graph here what I'm going to do is delete event pre-construct and event tick and just use event construct here as it's essentially like event begin play and out of this I'm going to cast to our game mode which for me is the third person game mode like so Object once again being get game mode, and then all we're going to simply do is right click as third person game mode, promote to variable, and I'm just going to name this game mode ref like so. 
so it's a reference to our game mode so we can easily access this later on it just makes the code a little bit more efficient so now we want to create some text as well so i'm going to compile that and go over to the designer and i'm just going to simply drag and drop in some text wherever i want it so i want it to be in the top left of the screen like so very simply that's all we need to do and then we can hit the bind next to text so under content text hit bind create binding and then what i'm going to do is move out the return node there get our game mode reference here so drag and drop get game mode ref and then all we simply want to do out of this is just drag out and get deaths and then we can just connect that straight into the return value there and that will just put on the amount of deaths on screen however i don't really want it like that because that would just be a number i want it to actually say deaths and then how many it's been so the player knows what it is so very simply we can come out the return value and get a format text like so in the format i'm going to write deaths colon space open brackets deaths close brackets and the open and close brackets are the ones with a little squiggle in the middle and i'll obviously put on screen now what i mean and as you can see now it's going to say deaths colon space and then we can input a value in there and that value i want to be the deaths integer i have there so we just connect it in and now it's going to read how many deaths we have after saying deaths so we can compile save and hit play to test this out although actually sorry we need to add this to the screen as well so let's go to the character blueprint and go to event begin play so i've got event begin play and a sequence and then, then one i'm going to create widget with the class being that deaths widget i just made and the return value being add to viewport not add unique sorry add to viewport so we're now going to see it on the screen compile and then hit play again and now you can see in the top left it says death zero if i walk into my checkpoint and then die it's going to go to deaths one and then die again death two death three and so on and so forth this now works perfectly for us so it's keeping track of how many times we have died and it's displaying it in the top left screen not going off when we die as well it just constantly stays there which is perfect for what we want and again i have different videos on save and load which will work perfectly for this so i think that bit for this video is we've done everything we want to do we've set it up so we can keep track of how many times the player has died updating when they die and not resetting or anything like that after they have died which works perfectly and it stays on screen as well and again i've gone over how to do the save and load so thanks so much for watching i hope you enjoyed and i hope you found it helpful and if you did make sure to like and subscribe down below so thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one